In this problem, it says that we have refrigerant 134A centering a compressor at 180 kilopascals as a saturated vapor with a flow rate of 0.35 meters cubed per minute and it leaves at 700 kilopascals and then it gives us the power supplied to the refrigerant during the compression process and it wants to know what is the temperature of the refrigerant at the exit of the compressor. So the first thing I'm going to do is work on the problem setup. So the problem setup, all I'm going to, all I'm doing is uh, doing a simple drawing of what's going on and writing down the information that was given. So I have a compressor and it says that it has refrigerant, so 134A, and then we have an inlet, an outlet, and so, and then it tells us the pressure at the inlet, so P1, is 180 kilopascals. Um, it tells us that it's a saturated vapor, so I'm going to write that down. And so that means that we have everything we need to look up data on the tables. Um, and then it also gives us the the volumetric flow rate, so V and this is 1 is equal to 0 0.35 meters cubed per minute and one thing to notice with this is this just says that it has a flow rate of 0 0.35 uh, meters cubed per minute so it doesn't say volumetric flow rate or mass flow rate or any kind of flow rate. It just says flow rate. So you can tell this the volumetric flow rate from the minutes. We have a volume per time. So pay attention to that because this could be a little bit confusing if you just read that and then thought it was a, a mass flow rate. All right, so at the outlet, so this is in, this is out, P2 is equal to 700 kilopascals and this makes sense because we have a compressor and the compressor a compressor is going to raise the pressure of um, whatever it is we're, comp we're this going through this so um, this so compressors are the compressor terminology is often used for um, gases and vapors so I'm just going to write this down. So a compressor is used to raise the pressure in gases and vapors, whereas a pump, a pump does the same thing. It raises the pressure of the fluid, but a pump is, if you have a liquid, then you refer to this as a pump. But both of these are basically, we're putting work into the system, and from that work we're, um, we're increasing the pressure of the fluid. So we do have work in. So I'm going to specify that as um, this work is 2.35 kilowatt. And I'm going to put the negative sign. Since the work is in, it's um, negative. And what we're looking for is the temperature at the exit. So we're looking for T2. And I think that that's basically all the information that was given. Now let's make some assumptions. The very first assumption that we really need to make to solve this problem is we need to make an assumption that this compressor isn't in the startup or shutdown phase. And in other words, you have steady flow. So the mass flow in, or the mass in, is equal to the mass out. So we don't have mass changing with time inside this compressor. And we pretty much need to make that assumption since we have flow in and flow out. Um, if we didn't make this assumption, this compressor would, wouldn't be operating correctly. So if this is steady flow, we know that the mass in is equal to the mass out, which is just equal to the mass flow rate. 
And this is where you don't want to get confused. So it gives us the volumetric flow rate, but that's different from the mass flow rate. So the volumetric flow rate is actually going to change. The volumetric flow rate, uh, so I'm assuming that unless you, so your volumetric flow rate is going to be different at the inlet and outlet unless you assume that you have an incompressible substance. And since we have a vapor, I don't think that we can assume that this is incompressible. So our volumetric flow rate is likely going to change between the inlet and the outlet. Our mass flow rate is going to be constant because we're assuming that it's steady state or steady flow. So the mass in is equal to the mass out. Um, the other thing is it doesn't give us any information about velocities and we're going to assume that the change in kinetic energy is approximately zero. So delta Ke is approximately zero. And we also likely don't have a large elevation difference between the inlet and the outlet, so we're going to assume that the change in potential energy is zero. And this also doesn't say anything about um, this being adiabatic or heat entering or leaving the system. So here's our system. We have work in, but it doesn't say anything about heat. So we're just going to assume that this is adiabatic. That's you, Compressors and pumps are often insulated, so then we can assume that Q dot is zero if we assume that this is adiabatic are the main assumptions we want to make. Now let's write down the equations we're going to solve. And remember, when you're doing these problems, don't even start writing down equations until you have your problem set up and you have your assumptions, because your problem set up and your assumptions are going to tell you what equations you need to use. So with this, we have basically saturated vapor flowing, sat so saturated vapor, that's refrigerant 134A, flowing into this compressor. It's being compressed to a um, higher pressure, and it wants us to calculate what T2 is, so the outlet temperature. It tells us what the work, what the work is and compress this, this vapor. So basically we need to do an energy balance, so we're going to use the first, we're going to apply the first law, and we're going to apply the first law for single stream steady flow. So we already, we already um, assumed this was steady flow. It's also single stream. There's only one, one inlet and one outlet. So we can just say Q minus W is equal to M dot H2 minus H1, change in enthalpy, plus the change in kinetic energy and we assume that the change in kinetic energy and potential energy were zero, but I'm going to write them in anyway just because I think it's good practice to write this entire equation and then cancel out the terms that you know are zero. So we assume this was zero, we assume this was zero, and we assumed that it was adiabatic, so we assumed that Q was zero. So now we have the work. So minus W, and don't lose your negative sign, is equal to M dot H2 minus H1. And so just to keep track of what we're solving for, we're solving for T2. And if we look at this equation, we know, we know the work because that was given. Um, we can calculate the mass flow rate from the volumetric flow rate using this equation. So m dot is equal to the volumetric flow rate divided by the specific volume. And we have, so we, we know the pressure and we know the, the phase at the inlet, so we can look up the specific volume at the inlet on the table. We can also look up the enthalpy at the inlet on the tables. So really what we want to do is solve for the enthalpy at the outlet and then we can look up, so we want to solve for the enthalpy at the outlet 
And then we can look up T2 on the table for like we can just look we can look up H2 and then we can see which temperature corresponds with um, that enthalpy. Basically these are the equations we need. Um, now let's go ahead and get our data. So the so we we want to look up the enthalpy at the inlet and the specific volume at the inlet. So at the inlet we know that the pressure is 180 kilopascals. We know that it's a saturated vapor. So we're going to go to our table for, um, so we're going to go to our, our saturated tables for refrigerant 134A and we're going to look at the pressure table and just look up 180 kilopascals. And since it's a saturated vapor, we know that H, the enthalpy at the inlet is equal to the enthalpy of the saturated vapor, which is equal to 242.9 kilojoules per kilogram. And the specific volume is just equal to the specific volume of the saturated vapor. And this is 0 0.1105 meters cubed per kilogram. So I just read these directly off the table. That should be everything we need to solve our equations. So now let's solve our equations. So I'm going to start by solving for m dot because we need that to we need we need that to solve our energy balance for the enthalpy at the outlet. So m dot 1 is equal to the volumetric flow rate at the inlet over the specific volume, and this is 0 0.35 meters cubed per minute divided by 0 0.1105 meters cubed per kilogram. So this works out to 3.167 kilogram per minute. And then we want to convert the minute to second. Um, second is a little more standard. So one minute to 60 seconds is equal to 0 0.0528 kilograms per second. All right, so now we want to solve our this equation, so our energy balance. So we have the minus W is equal to m dot h2 minus h1 um, and then this is I'm just gonna multiply this negative sign through so m dot h2 minus h1 now what I'm going to do is just plug in values and um, and then solve for h2 so so I know the work, I know the mass flow rate, I know the enthalpy at the inlet. I just want to solve for um, the enthalpy at the outlet. So the work is given, and it, the work is in, so that means it's negative 2.35 kilojoules per second. And this is equal to negative 0 0.0528 kilograms per second multiplied by H2 minus and then the enthalpy at the inlet is what we looked up so it was 242.9 kilojoules per kilogram. And then we can go ahead and solve this for H for the enthalpy at the outlet. The enthalpy at the outlet is equal to 287.9 actually just 287 kilojoules per kilogram and then we know that the pressure at the outlet is equal to 700 kilopascals so before we can um, look up the temperature we need to determine what the phase is so at 700 kilopascals um, the enthalpy of the liquid so I'm just going to put H 
the enthalpy of the liquid is equal to 88.82 kilojoules per kilogram, and the enthalpy of the saturated vapor is 265.08 kilojoules per kilogram. So this means that our enthalpy is greater, so the enthalpy at the outlet is greater than the enthalpy of the um, saturated vapor. So that means that we have a superheated vapor. So that means we need to look at the superheated vapor table to get the temperature. So we have a superheated vapor. And so what we need to do is find the column for, or the section of the table for 0.7 megapascals. We, and then we just look at the enthalpies until we find the enthalpy that we have, and then we read off the temperature, and I have 40 degrees and 50 degrees, and then the enthalpy is 278.6 and 288.5. So that means that our temperature is um, between 40 and 50, and if we interpolate, we'll find that our temperature is 48, so T2 is equal to 48.9 degrees Celsius.